Thomas, let's begin our ninth annual Windsor High School Hall of Fame induction ceremony with Colleen Mitchell Gallagher. <laughs> Class of 86, Colleen Mitchell Gallagher, a successful two-sport career at Windsor High, played both field hockey and softball registered many significant accomplishments along the way. She was a captain for two years, the softball captain her senior year, so she's a field hockey captain for two years and her softball captain in her senior year. <laughs> Second team all stayed in field hockey during her senior year, a member of the uh, CCC West Championship softball team. Uh, 40 career wins as a pitcher, that's impressive. <laughs> A 12 and 1 pitching record. Who beat you? Do you remember? No. Crystal? All right. The heck with them. Anyway, 12 and 1 as a pitcher. A scholar athlete senior year and a total of uh, six varsity letters. After Windsor High, she went on to Assumption a College. She was a member of the field hockey team there for four years, earned a degree in English. Now she's a, a teacher. <laughs> At Clinton Middle School, she's married to her husband, Tim Gallagher, has two sons, Brendan and Connor. And she's going to be introduced by her sister, Noreen Mitchell. Good evening. First, thank you, Windsor High School Hall of Fame all the committee members, previous inductees, and of course tonight's inductees and their family and friends. I am here tonight to rave and introduce to you my sister and friend, Colleen Mitchell Gallagher. I'm sure many of you know that there is only one year between Colleen and me, so we were always paired together by our parents as the two youngest out of four girls. We weren't always friends, as young girls, she teased me constantly. And until we left our parents' house, we shared a bedroom and one could easily see our distinct differences. <laughs> My OCD neat side of the room and well, her messy side of the room. I didn't play any sports and she played many sports. And she played those sports well. Although she continued her field hockey career into her college years, it was high school softball that brought us closer together. As a freshman, I became the manager for the Windsor High School girls softball team, and I truly loved every minute of it. From meticulously keeping the book to the camaraderie of the athletes and fans, it was fulfilling and truly one of my fondest high school memories. But none of it compared to the absolute joy of watching Colleen in action. And I know my mother and father felt the same way, truly one of their proudest moments as parents. I was so enveloped in every game, and I was her number one fan. My eyes were glued to every pitch. Colleen worked hard to be the best pitcher and hitter that she could be, because her team needed her. From getting her back adjusted at the chiropractor right before most home games, to soaking in our tub at home after games with a two by four across the tub so she could finish her homework. <laughs> she was the consummate scholar athlete. Colleen continues with this same passion and dedication in every area of her life. As a teacher, a friend, a sister, a wife, a daughter, and of course, as a mother. She gives her all. And as an athlete, she is still fierce. Just last summer, she whooped me in pickleball. <laughs> and, I, and I thought I was pretty good. So tonight is about you, Colleen. Enjoy every moment. You most definitely deserve it. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the privilege and honor of introducing you to my sister and friend, Colleen Mitchell Gallagher. Okay. 
Okay. Hello. Um, first, I would like to thank the committee for their consideration of my nomination, and in a special way, thank my sister Noreen for submitting the application and all that that entailed. I must say, I'm unaccustomed to her being so nice. <laughs> she is known as the pit bull in, in our family. If you want something done, you call her. So thank you very much. Uh, in fact, let me just put this as a little aside. Before, um, just last week or a few weeks ago, she said, she called and said, just so you know, um, Sheila Martin said that I can say anything I want. <laughs> and I said, just so you know, I'm going up after you. <laughs> um, and I was joking, because she, she likes to say, you know, I, I'm always your biggest fan. And um, that reminds me of that movie, Misery, is it? <laughs> that Kathy Bates won the, won the award for. You guys remember, you know where I'm going with this. Anyway, um, so thank you very much. I was uh, reminiscing the other night with my mom about what she remembers from those days of high school. And uh, we, we both had a similar memory. And one of those is, um, so there are four girls, and we had one car growing up. My father took the car to work, and my parents were always at every game, faithful. My mother would get dropped off by her coworker, and she would walk on, on Sage Park Road, and she'd walk across all the fields um, until she came. Sometimes, she, well, she'd go to the field hockey games, and she would watch those and really not know what was going on most of the time. Um, but she loved to go to the softball fields. Um, and I, we both, I can picture her walking across her little white purse across those fields. That's a distinct memory I have. Um, and my, they, they love those softball games so much. And I'm just thinking of my, my dad would sometimes, you know, he would get a little too vociferous, and usually, usually at the ums, at which point I would remember as a pitcher um, having to take a little pause there on the pitcher's mound and kind of give my father the hairy eyeball out there. Um, nothing like a teenage girl giving her father the nonverbal, Dad, you're embarrassing me. Um, but I was always grateful for their presence at all of those games. And I was just thinking about what to say up here, uh, and it got me thinking about how much I've learned from sports throughout the years. And that poem, and some of you may remember it, by Robert Fulgham, All I Ever Needed to Know I Learned from Kindergarten. Remember that poem? That was actually written in 1986, a very good year. Um, and for those who don't know it, he lists uh, the basic tenets of good living that he first learned in kindergarten. Things like play fair, share, say you're sorry. You get the picture. And I just was thinking about all that I've learned in sports over the years. So I just created my own top five list of lessons I've learned in sports. It originally it was um, like David Letterman, the top 10, but my husband said I'd be talking too long. So here's my top five of things I've learned. Um, the first was to be prepared. Um, I can't help but think about Judy Saxon here also known as Sarge, she introduced us to double sessions way back in the day. Painful memories. And we were actually the only team at the time, besides football, that had double sessions. I don't know why that was, but it was, it was unusual. Um, and I remember Sally Juca and I, we talked about this, how we would ride our bikes, we would, because it began a few weeks before school started, we'd ride our bikes from home, and go to practice, run, run, run. And then you take your bike home for lunch and then go back again. And it was, it was such a beating early on, but it only really happened, the, I think the first, maybe the second year, and then you, you kind of learned. You learned that you needed to get there. You need to be in shape by the time you got to those practices. It just would make your life so much easier. So, um, and, and it was brutal for me, that running was so hard. And I remember we would have to run all, around all the fields, and we'd be timed. And for those of you that don't, don't know me, I'm not a natural runner. Hard to believe I know. Uh, and I'm not fast either. And I think Christine and I, who's here tonight, look, she's laughing. We're almost always in last place. And I think, um, I, re I wrote down here, I think I may have learned to swear from Christine during those laughs. Uh, but as I said, it was that first year that I was un unprepared. After that, you learned. You learned, you learned your lesson. Um, and I will say, even though we lost games in field hockey, it, it never was because we were out of shape. And that, um, 
I just learned, you know, you learned to be prepared. That was my, my first lesson. The second one was how to develop a good work ethic, perseverance. Um, nothing can replace good old fashioned hard work. And, you know, there are always gonna be better players, better people that, are, people that are better than you on the fields. And if you've played enough sports, you have without a doubt encountered this. And if you haven't played, this is true about life in general as well. Some people are truly blessed with natural gifts. The rest of us just have to practice a little longer and work a little harder. There's no shame in that. And a good work ethic will serve you well in life and earn the respect of your peers. Number three was to be a good teammate. I have always loved being part of a team. Maybe that's what first drew me to sports. You had a ready-made squad with the same goal in mind. When I look back at some of those teams that I love the most, it was those that had quality, positive leaders who led by example. I'm not talking about the coaches. I'm talking about my teammates. Those people who wanted the best out of you and for you and cheered when it happened. My friend Sally Juca was one, one such teammate. Sally was the quintessential example of how to do things the right way. Thank you for that. Surround yourself with people who want the best for you and be that light for someone else. It matters. Fourth, sportsmanship and integrity. I think that is one of the most important valuable lessons I have learned from sports. Sportsmanship can be difficult to teach, but you know when you see it, and you don't forget it. I have this vivid memory. I was trying to think back about different games and things when I played in a good example of sportsmanship, and the one I, that came to mind the most was actually one with my son. Um, I have this vivid memory of this flag football final game. Um, and it was the finals, and I just know he, he gave all that he could in that game, and he still lost. And, and there was this one really phenomenal athlete on the other team named Ryan McCarthy. And while the other team lost, Ryan's team was celebrating, primarily due to, the, to this Ryan's efforts, and he walked away from his team, this Ryan, like 10 or 11 years old, came over to Brendan and, and told him what a good game he had played. And he didn't know my son at the time, and again, so young, but I, I, that, that, was, that stands in my mind as really such a class act about winning, um, winning and losing with class. So acknowledge, and acknowledging, and that, sorry, acknowledge talent in whatever form, whenever you see it. And my last one, um, the last of my top five is about following your passion, passion and taking chances. And as a teacher, I feel like I've noticed that many of today's youth have a fear of failure and taking risks. And sometimes you just have to take a leap and let the, chip, the chips fall where they may, because that's the only way that one truly grows. Um, so I want to preface this story about talking about my softball coach. So my softball coach in high school is Phil Melkars, who was in large part the reason why I'm here tonight. Phil came to Windsor from Meriden, I believe, where he had coached baseball for his entire coaching career. I think he believed the transition from boys baseball to girls softball would be an easy one. He set up our practices as he had always done with his baseball team. You know, the typical infield, outfield, running the bases, etc. I can still remember our indicator and signs. I was showing Tim that the other night, bought Henrock Steel. And then we had this little secret play which I'm not gonna tell anybody about, but it did work. He knew his stuff and it was impressive, really. Except he never did factor in the girl part. We teenage girls had other things on our minds. Um, I wonder if that 2000, uh, 2012 Tom Hanks movie, A League of Their Own, was based on Phil. There's no crying in baseball. I joke us anyway. Um, a, a brief reminder that my number five is about passion and taking chances. So fast forward to our South Windsor night game. We loved playing South Windsor because they had lights at night. And we didn't have that at the time. That was a big deal for us. So this one night, um, I came up to bat. I'm gonna say the bases were loaded. I don't know if they were. I'm gonna say maybe one or two were really on, but and I, I, I come up to bat and it's just so exciting, you know? The lights and everybody there. Um, and I hit the ball and I, I hit it pretty hard. I have to say, not out of the park, but it was out there. And, I, and I'm speeding around the bases, as Phil would like to say, like I have a piano on my back, <laughs> my normal speed. I, I round second, and I see my coach with his hands up on third, signaling to stop. 
We know the sign, right? Unless you were a police officer with white gloves. It was so clear, right? Stop. I had to stop at third. Um, but I was not having it. I was feeling the home run. I round third, going for it all, out of the plane. Oh my gosh, I'm face down full of dirt. Phil walks by, looks at me, confirming with my guilty countenance that I did in fact see his full stop sign, says nothing, and walks past me. But from the corner of my eye, I saw the slightest sign of a smirk. He got it. Sometimes you gotta take a chance. Um, uh, that makes a good story, right? Uh, what is it? There's a country song that says, sometimes you're the bug, sometimes you're the windshield. <laughs> uh, so I just, my last, just my last comment, um, who knew that having so much fun doing something you loved would teach you so much in life? Thank you to all who came to support me and celebrate with me tonight. My husband, Tim, and my sons, Brendan and Connor. Uh, my mom, my sisters, Mary, and Noreen, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to put Dave in there too. And my, my brother-in-law, Dave, uh, my high school teammates and friends, Sally and Christine, and my college roommates and their wives, and my dear friends, Dan and Peg. Thank you for coming and thanks so much. May we all meet again. God willing, and the creek, the creek don't rise. Right, Dan? Thank you. Our next inductee, Robin Ouellette Curtanis, class of 93. Uh, Robin graduated from Windsor High in 93 lettering and softball. During her time in Windsor, she was selected to the Central Connecticut All-Conference team three times and was co-captain her senior year. She was a starting pitcher her sophomore, junior, and senior year and led the team to one class double L state tournament quarterfinal and two class double L state tournament semifinal games. One went into extra innings. Although they never won the state tournament, they did win the CCC West title all four years. In three years as a starting pitcher, Robin recorded over 50 wins, only 10 losses, pitched three no hitters, two one hitters, 10 two hitters, nine three hitters. Nobody hit this girl. <laughs> she lives in Suffield with her husband, Jeffrey, mother of two children, Kaylee, Brendan, and stepmother to Jillian, Matthew, and Kristen. And athletics remain an important part of Robin's life as she has embraced the role of a multi-sport mom. She's going to be introduced tonight by her father, Robert Ouellette. Good evening. Well, that just about took my whole uh, page out, but uh, uh, softball has come a long way in 30 years since Robin was pitching for Windsor High. Today, the players come into high school more skilled and able to do more things. They now almost play 12 months a year instead of two. They have pitching coaches, batting coaches. They play at AAU teams. Robin had none of these. What she did have was a desire to be the best and had a great work ethic. She started pitching when I was coaching Little League and I discovered we had no pitchers on the team. So out in the yard, she had a crash course on pitching. I knew when our sessions were over, when she would take off her sneakers, throw them at me and go, and go marching into the house. Actually, back then, she had a better aim with the sneakers than she did with the softball. <laughs> Um, fast forwarding to her freshman year in high school, 
she decided to give up basketball and concentrate on, on the pitching. Robin joined the, rec the racquetball center in Pearson Lane, where in the fall and winter for four years, she would work out multiple times a week. She would do weight training and then go into a court with her masking tape and softballs, make a strike zone on the back wall and throw hundreds of pitches into it. She did this for four years. This hard work is why she is being honored here tonight. When winter, she did have 50 wins instead of, uh, so she's a little bit ahead here. And uh, she had uh, 10 losses. Three of them were in the tournament, and two of them were losses one to nothing. And th in the 25 games, she did give up three hits or less. She pitched 364 innings in the three years. She gave up 207 hits and struck out 449 batters, which comes to about 1.3 batters per inning. I guess pretty much all of her uh, achievements have been uh, already said. Um, but there's one story I, I guess I'll, I want to tell her. Um, she came home one night, she says, Dad, coach is really mad at me. I said, why? She says, we, we were doing a drill and they had a batter up and the catching and I kept, the batters couldn't swing and I kept throwing at the pitchers in and the coach kept screaming, who was also Phil Melkards, by the way, <laughs> kept screaming, throw the ball inside, throw the ball inside. Well, this went on for three or four batters and that's all I heard from coach saying, throw the ball inside. So he finally got mad at me, picked up the bat, stood in the batter's box and says, throw the ball inside. So after four or five pitches, him still yelling at me, I hit him in the ribs. <laughs> I want to close with, talking about Phil Melkars again, a, a story was in the J.I., a uh, quote from him was in the J.I. in her senior year. He said, for three years, well, that has been the CCC West's best pitcher. It had the key to our Windsor defense. She has pitched virtually every game, and first mainly as a control artist, but she has gained velocity in each year. Now she's baffled some, and sometimes overpowers opposing batters with her four pitches. She pitched through severe back pain as a junior. Nothing in this game seemed to phase her. Robin has been able to maintain her poise regardless of what is happening around her. Robin, you know that your mother and I are your best friends and congratulations on this. What dad didn't tell you is that um, coach threw a bat at me after I hit him in the ribs. <laughs> he, he wouldn't be able to get away, from, away with that now. So a couple of weeks ago, I was decorating the Suffield High School soccer field for my son's senior night. And I was decorating with another senior mom. And we were chatting and realized we were both from Windsor. And we went through the obligatory questions. You know, where, what part of Windsor did you grow up in? Who did you hang out with? What year did you graduate? And when she asked me what my maiden name was and I told her, her response was, oh, you were a softball pitcher. So I'm very thankful that I went to school in a time before social media and that's what I was remembered for. <laughs> so thank you to the Windsor High School Athletic Hall of Fame Committee for this recognition and trip down memory lane. Thank you to my family for being here tonight to enjoy this award with me. And thank you for proving to my children that not only was I a teenager once, but I was also a student athlete. As I was trying to think about what I wanted to say today, I look back through my scrapbook of photos and newspaper clippings for inspiration. What stands out to me the most was what a great group of teammates and supporters I had <clears throat> over my four years of Windsor High School softball. Not that the stats of my pitching accomplishments weren't the most important memories I cherish, but they weren't necessarily the ones that happened on the playing field. It was the kindness of the upperclassmen when I was an incoming freshman. It was being absolutely terrified to follow in the footsteps of my predecessor, 
Nicole Gervais because I thought she was incredible. It was pre-season in early March running through the school hallways because it was too cold, too cold outside and being sore in places I didn't know were possible. It was carpooling to Saturday morning practices with my teammates and stopping for donuts at the Windsor Donut Shop on the way. It was the cheers and the songs we sang on the bus when we won and the tears we cried when we lost. It was the inside jokes and nicknames we had for each other and especially for Coach, though we would never call them to his face. It was my number 33 jersey and my lucky athletic socks that I wore in every single game. And yes, I still have them. And it's in keeping in touch with those girls today and being proud of where they're all in their lives. I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge the person that had such a large role in my softball success, my dad. So many hours were spent practicing in the makeshift pitching mound in our yard with dad sitting on the back of a tricycle and a thick pad in his glove, which unfortunately didn't help with his bruising on his palm. In the basement trying to pitch into a basket and he gave me 50 cents for every one I got in. And when I got too tall and hit the rafters, we moved to the racquetball court with painter's tape and indoor softball. I didn't always like you. I didn't always like your coaching and your critique, but I get it. I get it now. I will always remember the extremes you went to so you can attend my games. The extra glasses and suit jacket you would leave in your office with the lights on so that you could sneak out and they wouldn't notice. I used to think you were crazy, but now I understand the level of anxiety on missing out as games on a, as a sports parent. The goal of high school sports is to learn how to be a better person and teammate, to be humbled with the realization that you will not win them all, but most importantly, enjoy the time of being a teenager and having the opportunity to play the game you love. Thank you again for this honor. Our next Hall of Fame inductee in this ninth annual Windsor High School Hall of Fame induction, Keon Smith, class of 97, basketball player at Windsor High School, four-time All-Central Connecticut Conference selection, three-time New Haven Register All-State selection, twice selected to the Hartford Current All-State team, a McDonald's All-American nominee. Keon Smith scored 1,500 points in his Windsor career. He's introduced tonight by a man whose name is synonymous with excellence in high school basketball here in the state of Connecticut, Ken Smith. This is a great honor to uh, bring in to the Hall of Fame uh, this next player. To me, he was the best player that we had, but I was really biased because he was my baby. Um, Keon did so much for the program because we had won back-to-back -back state championships after he graduated. So I don't know if that was a good thing or, you know, a bad thing, but he was just such a great player and a great son. Uh, words cannot describe at this moment how I feel about this guy. Uh, I love him to death. He's been a great young man for me. He's been a great child. Um, I think this is a great honor. I really appreciate um, you guys coming out. and Congratulations to all you recipients tonight which is nice, but it's very special for me to say some things 
and bring this guy in. I'm a man of few words, uh, especially like this, but uh, it's a great honor for me to welcome my child, my son, uh, my heart and soul, my son, Keon Smith. Thank you, Dad. I greatly appreciate everything you set up here. <laughs> um, I'd like to thank the committee for uh, inducting me um, along with my dad. He was inducted uh, years ago, so now it's definitely a family affair. I would like to also thank my teammates for passing me the ball. Uh, without that talent that they had, I wouldn't have been able to score 1,500 points. <laughs> thank you. I think some of y'all might be on that 99 team over there. But uh, I'm going to keep my speech uh, short and sweet. Uh, I've been reading John's uh, Zito's bio, and I haven't finished yet. So um, I, I kind of want to get back to the table to do that. Um, also, I do want to thank Mr. and Mrs. Zito for having John at a young age, or having him younger than I am. Uh, John is a great player, and I know half of that uh, 1,500 points might have been going to him. So I greatly appreciate that also. Um, and last but not least, I'd like to thank both of my parents. Um, and I know some of you know uh, Ken Smith very well, and you know he is the mastermind. He is Mr. Blueprint of everything. He is a no-nonsense coach, and some of the guys who will be up here earlier do know that very well. Uh, same thing with the guy who's coming up next. He is a very no-nonsense coach. Playing under Coach Ken Smith is not easy. Not easy by any means, but I can tell you what, and I know these guys would say the same thing, they wouldn't play under any other coach besides him in their, in their high school career. And, and that's true and dear to the heart. Also, I would like to thank uh, my motor, my drive, my fire, my mom, Patricia Smith, who is also sitting next to my dad, who is also no nonsense. I don't know if anybody has gone to the games. I know especially when I played 99 team, Mike, Rob, John played. There have been times where you don't know who was actually coaching. <laughs> Um, I know for myself, um, all I heard was get the ball and go. And it wasn't in Ken Smith's voice. <laughs> um, with that being said, with him being no nonsense, I think he gets it from my mom. And I will end off with this story. And this is when I knew that she might have been one of the, she is, I should say, one of the greatest mothers that I've ever came encounter with. So we were in an AU game out in Tennessee, and like the other players who will come up here after me know, at a young age, you always want to play, you find a game anywhere. So we just so happened to find a three-on-three -three game against some kids from Indiana outside of the parking lot. And as everybody knows, I like to go pretty hard. Ended up falling on my butt bone, tailbone, whatever you want to call it. I was bruised for the night. So now again, because my dad is no nonsense, I'm afraid. I'm scared. So I got a plan. I ice it all night, you know, sit in the bed. I, I'm going to be all right. 15, 14, 15 years old, we're going to be OK. We recuperate. Tomorrow morning, I'll be great. Well, tomorrow morning came, and I couldn't move. I could barely walk. So I got out there, and coincidentally, we were playing the kids from Indiana. And warm up, you know, I can kind of play it off. I kind of go through the motions a little bit. But when the game came, I couldn't move. Guys were blowing by me left and right. Now, Rob and Mike, I know y'all going to say, well, you don't play any defense anyway. <laughs> but I just couldn't move that day. <laughs> so my dad, Coach Smith, kicked me off the bench. Now I go sit up there with your mother. Mind you, at the same time, right, right, <laughs> I hear the reaction. 
Mind you, at the time, my mom was up there with her friend. Now, the, 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 the stands are empty. Like, it's not a packed house or anything. It's just a regular AAU game. So I'm sitting up there, halftime. She looks to her left. She goes, why are you sitting next to me? Again, 14, 15 years old, I'm huffing and puffing. Daddy kicked me off the bench. Told me to come up here and sit next to you. She then turns back to her right, looks at her friend and says, hold on, I'll be right back. <laughs> now at this time, I don't know how long they've been married. I don't ask that question. I know it's been a long time. But for whatever reason, at that particular point in time, he was not her husband. He was Coach Smith. Right. So we get down there and she says, excuse me, coach, but I want to know why my son is not playing. <laughs> so again, he must did not. He must, he didn't get the memo. So he said, well, stop playing around. Adam. All right. Uh, she said, oh, OK, well, I didn't fly however many miles it was across wherever to watch my son sit in the stands with me. So he said, I'm not playing around, he's not playing. She says, okay, well, if he's not playing, you're not gonna coach. <laughs> Again, back to her rant, get the ball, go, 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 defense, defense, ah! My dad looks at the ref and goes, ref, you have to get her out of here. <laughs> ref said, I can't. See, the problem is, and I don't know if people are familiar with the AAU thing going on, if you're part of the coaching staff, you get in free. So he made her an assistant coach. <laughs> Ref goes, coach, she's an assistant coach. I can't do nothing with her until she gets two texts. <laughs> then he looks at her. He looks down the, down the bench. She says, get in the game. She looks at me. She goes, are you ready? I said, yes, mom. She looks at Coach Smith her husband, my dad, and she says, thank you. <laughs> From that point on, I knew that I had one of the realest moms in the world, and I want to thank her very much. I also want to congratulate all the people who's been inducted before me, who's going to be inducted tonight, and definitely the people who will be inducted in the future. I greatly appreciate everything. This is a great Great convenience, it's a great honor, and thank you very much. Our next inductee is John Zito from the class of 01. He began his career as a warrior playing for Coach Tylon Smith for his freshman team, then became a starter for Coach Ken Smith on the 99 state championship team as a sophomore. He went on to be a 1,000 point scorer for the Warriors, earning first team all state his senior year from both the Hartford Current and the New Haven Register. After graduating from Windsor, John Zito attended St. Thomas Moore Prep for a post-grad year. Then he played for Coach Jerry Quinn there. When he finished third in his league and graduated, that, that team actually graduated a total of nine Division I players. So a lot of great basketball there. After that, from St. Thomas More, he traveled to Baltimore, Maryland, attended the University of Maryland, Baltimore County, UMBC, well-known program. Full Division I scholarship. He was a three-year captain there, and he earned all America East second team honors in his senior year after leading UMBC with a 13 and a half point average, seven rebounds. I'm rounding up, John, I hope you don't mind. <laughs> he averaged 10 points a game in his career, amassed 978 points in 100 games with the Retrievers. And then went to play uh, in the Italian Pro League after that. After his playing career, he traveled back to Connecticut, began his coaching career as an assistant to the head coach at Fairfield University, great coach Ed Cooley. After serving with Fairfield, returned to UMBC, first of two stints with his alma mater, uh, and served under former coach Randy Monroe. First season as an assistant there, he helped guide the Retrievers to the America East Conference Championship game, 
following year, he went on to recruit fellow Windsor native Adrian Satchel, who earned first-team all-rookie America East honors. John went on to recruit nine all-league players in his seven total years at UMBC. Obviously, great recruiter. Then following the seven years at UMBC, he was named the head coach at John Carroll School, private high school in Baltimore Catholic League, great league. In his first season, he guided the team to the league semifinals, 26 and 12. Then went on to coach the young men at the University of Washington, Texas A&M, Rutgers, Towson, St. John's, and also was the head coach to Emmanuel Quickly, who played at the University of Kentucky and was named the SEC Player of the Year as a sophomore. He was drafted 25th by the Knicks and has played very well for them in his uh, first two years uh, after being coached by John Zito. He currently lives in Cockeysville, Maryland with Ashley, his wife, and their two boys, Trey and Enzo. And he's gonna be introduced tonight by his father, John Zito. First of all, congratulations to all of tonight's class of 2020 Windsor High School Athletic Hall of Fame inductees, their family and friends. I'm extremely honored that my son John asked me to present him tonight for induction into this distinguished Hall of Fame class. When he asked me to present him, I was flooded with a mixture of memories and emotions from his long basketball journey, which still continues today. Like most youngsters growing up in Windsor, John enjoyed playing seasonal sports with his friends. Baseball in the summer, travel soccer in the fall, and of course basketball in the winter. He seemed to get a little more serious about basketball as early as fifth grade when he started playing on the Windsor travel basketball teams. His mom and I tried to encourage him not to focus on any one sport until he was getting closer to high school. He played baseball through his little league years, continued to play travel soccer through eighth grade, all the while playing basketball in town and on local AAU teams. As a ninth grader in 98, he played on the Windsor High School freshman team. That was the first of Coach Smith's back-to-back -back state champions. As he always does, Coach Smith expands his roster during the tournament time, often bringing up younger players to gather experience with the older players. John was not one of those players who was brought up and that seemed to light a little spark inside him. I remember after that 99 team celebrated their state championship, John asked his mom and I if he could start working out with a personal strength coach to build up his body. We said we would, we would but only if he was serious about it. He said that since the varsity team was losing their entire starting five, he felt that he had a good chance to be in that starting rotation the following year. As much as we admired his confidence, we had to remind him that he hadn't even played a JV game yet. During that summer, the returning seniors put together a team in which they played together in various leagues and tournaments. As the season approached, John felt he had a chance to contribute. I remember he came home from a workout one night saying that Coach Smith told him, all we really need is somebody who can make layups and rebound. Sure enough, first game of that year, there was the then skinny six foot two John lining up at center. As we know, led by a tremendous senior clash, that magical year ended in the second consecutive state championship for Windsor High School. After that, John seemed to dedicate himself to the game, constantly working out and improving, all the while building his body as he continued to grow. He finished his high school career with more than 1,000 points and 650 rebounds, earning multiple all-conference honors first team All-State his senior year. He decided to do a postgraduate year at St. Thomas More. That PG year brought him multiple Division I offers. He decided to attend UMBC on a full athletic scholarship. A side note, uh, during that time at St. Thomas More, John asked his mom and I, he said, hey, if I get a full scholarship to high school, uh, to college, will you guys buy me a car for college? <laughs> I think that's a pretty good trade-off. 
yeah, no problem. So he decides to sign with UMBC, signs a letter of intent. I get a call one day at work. He says, hey, Dad, uh, me and Eddie, his friend Eddie Berry, at the car dealership uh, looking for a car. I said, great, where are you? He said, the Mercedes-Benz dealer. <laughs> I said, well, there's a used car Hoffman dealership over on Connecticut Boulevard. You may want to go over there. <laughs> um, he had a great career at UMBC, being named a three-time captain, ending, ending his career at the time as a top 10 scorer and rebounder in school history, then signed a contract to play professionally in Italy. After stops in Italy, John began his coaching career, which continues today. A particular exciting moment for all of us was when in 2018, John brought his John Carroll boys basketball team from Bel Air, Maryland to play a game against St. Andrews from Rhode Island on the very same court that he played his high school career, the Ken Smith basketball court at Windsor High School. He continues to successfully coach high school and AAU basketball at an extremely high level. John lives in Maryland with his beautiful wife, Ashley, and their two amazing sons, Trey and Enzo. People in town will offer also, um, excuse me, people in town will inquire about John and his basketball exploits. The conversation inevitably ends with, you and your wife must be very proud of John. We are proud of John. We're proud of the husband, the father, the son, the brother, the grandson, and leader of young men that he is. His basketball achievements are just the icing on the cake. Without further ado, John's mom and I are extremely honored and proud to present our son John for induction into the class of 2020 Windsor High School Athletic Hall of Fame. Thanks, Dad. Um, Mike, I appreciate you uh, abbreviating my bio for, <laughs> for Keon. I also found it equally funny, uh, Keon's profile picture is him playing defense, which he, <laughs> he also commented on, so. Took a while to find Yeah, that. yeah, yeah, it took a while. <laughs> it took a while to find that picture, Debo. Um, I, I wanted to thank the committee for, for uh, you know, inducting me tonight. Uh, congratulations to all the other inductees. Um, this is certainly a great honor. I want to thank my wife uh, for joining me tonight. Uh, my mom and dad uh, and the rest of my family, they, all, they were always a big, big support for me uh, growing up, whether it was sports or school or whatever it was. They, they were just really big time supporters and certainly appreciative. Um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of long nights down at Loomis Chafee with my dad. Um, Working out, um, getting up shots, you know, talking basketball. He, 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 my dad's a real basketball junkie, and it, it rubbed off on me. And I hope one day it rubs off on one or, or, or both of my boys. So certainly appreciative. Um, I appreciate my teammates. I want to thank them, and I think it's only right that I was inducted on the night that you know the the '99 team is also getting inducted. Um, you know, those guys for me. Once I got to high school, were all. Be like big brothers to me, Mike, uh, you know, guys like Brian Dugalinski, um, Gene Talbert, you know, growing up in Windsor as, as a basketball guy, you, you, you watch, you know, Keon Smith, Russell Scott, um, Steve Taylor, and then again, Mike and, and some of the old, older guys. And, and you sit there and you say, man, I want to, I want to play on that Friday, in, in that Friday night game. And, um, you know, uh, those guys raised me once I got to high school. And um, I'll forever be grateful for that. Uh, obviously, Coach Smith, um, you know, the reason why all of us uh, had success in Windsor basketball. Um, you know, wanting to, to, to be a part of the, the program as, as, a, as a youngster, as a little guy, was, was really like a dream. You know, seeing those guys play on that court on Friday nights, it was. It was really special, and and to be able to go through it, live it, do it, win championships, um, is is really a dream come true for for a small town kid like myself. 
Um, you know, at first my role was really small. Like my dad mentioned, you know, coach came to me my sophomore year and said, hey, man, if you, if you defend, you make, make layups and you rebound, you'll have a spot on this team. And I said, well, I, I can do those things. Um, you know, guys like Mike Dukes made sure the ball went in the basket. And, um, but but we, we, we had a, a real special team, a real special program. Coach, coach has done a phenomenal job. Um, you know, I, I've been very fortunate to be, travel the world as both a player and a coach. And, and what is here in Windsor is not normal. It's, you know, winning at, at that rate and, um, you know, what he's able to, what he's been able to do is, is certainly not normal. Um, you know, I don't know how many years you've been going coach, but you know, I know as long as I've remembered Windsor basketball, it was always associated with winning. That's it. Winning. And, and, and winning is not normal. You know, if, if further you get along in life, you, you soon realize that. And at the time, um, you know, we, we're young, we don't appreciate it like we should, right? We, we, were, we had our leather jackets, man, and you couldn't tell us anything with those, with those leather jackets and state championship jackets. Um, but, but, you know, now as an adult, it, you, you look back and you have a much greater appreciation for what we were a part of, uh, what, what we were able to build and help, help coach kind of build. But, um, you know, what Coach Ken Smith has been able to do is, 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 is just not normal, you know? So I, I really want to give praise and, and thank you, Coach, for everything. Um, because, <laughs> you know, like, like, uh, like Keon mentioned, like my dad mentioned, we, you know, I, I wouldn't want any other coach. Uh, you know, I, again, played college ball, played professional ball. I've never had a coach like, like Coach Ken Smith. And, uh, you know, he's had such a, a, a huge impact on my life and forever grateful. I hope to have uh, a similar impact on young men as I progress through my, my coaching journey. Um, so, again, thank you, Coach. Uh, you know, again, I, I, I just – growing up here in Windsor is, is um, very fortunate. And, and, and I feel like the last couple of years – I've, I've really gained a, a, a newfound respect and, and, and just appreciation for being able to grow up in a town like Windsor. Windsor is not uh, a town that you see a lot in, in here in, in this country. We, we, we were fortunate enough to grow up with folks from all different walks of life. And um, being down in Maryland, you know, that, that's just not how a lot, a lot of life is. And, um, you know, Obviously, very fortunate to be a part of the basketball program, but also extremely fortunate to be a part of this town and, and grow up in this town. Um, and, and for that, I'll, I'll also be forever grateful. But uh, best, of, best of luck to you, Coach, and, and the guys this year. Um, thank you again for this great honor. I, I certainly really appreciate it. And um, enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you. Uh, we continue with our inductions. <laughs> Jessalyn Dvorak from the class of 2008. She graduated from Windsor High School in 2008, played soccer and lacrosse all four years. And she was selected to the All-State Lacrosse team her senior year. Jessalyn went on to become a two-sport athlete at the University of New England for four years and won the UNE Female Senior Leadership Award for the 2011 and 2012 athletic year. After graduating college, Jesslyn moved to Seattle, Washington, where she still resides today. She coached girls lacrosse there for five years, regularly played in rec soccer up until recently. She now stays busy playing with her dog, Cedar, and mountain biking with her fiance, Levi. And she's gonna be introduced by her mother, Marsha Peterson.
I was so busy tonight I, doing my arts and crafts that I didn't have time to write my speech. So some of Jessie's fans are here. I don't think I ever embarrassed her as her mother in high school, but I guess tonight's my night. But anyway, congratulations to all of you who were inducted tonight, and thank you for nominating Jessie. Of course, I am one of her number one fans. And I invited some of her friends from high school. She's been back to Windsor for three of her high school friends' weddings this year, which is great, and tonight. So we haven't even traveled to Seattle this year because her roots in Windsor are really strong. So thank you for inviting us and inducting Jesse tonight. Also, her youth pastors here, her Sunday school teachers, some of the moms that rooted for her, Mama Deeb, Margie Degada was the mom that worked at the high school. She was my inside mom, and that was great. She always made sure our kids, you know, minded their business and whatnot. Um, but thank you to the committee. Mr. Coach O'Shea was, I think, one of Jesse's first coaches when she was like six years old. The boys, back when the boys and girls played together when they were little kids. So thank you. That was, that was great seeing you. Um, but also, when she went to high school here in Windsor, she graduated in 2008, she'd never even picked up a lacrosse stick before. But her girlfriend said, Jess, you can run really fast. Jess, you've got to come and play lacrosse. So guess what? She did. She picked up the lacrosse stick and she played lacrosse for four years and soccer. And then when she graduated in 2008, she went to UNE, a Division III school in New England, just the right fit, the right size, planning to play soccer uh, there. Well, again, the coach found out she played lacrosse in high school and her friends, Jess, come on, you can run really fast, good defender. You can play lacrosse. So she did. So we put a lot of miles on the car. Um, we didn't miss a single game. We really still miss. We live by Northwest Park, and we love hearing those whistles. We just really miss um, going to the game. So congratulations, Jess. I'm your number one fan. <laughs> Classic. Thanks, Mom, <laughs> for the intro. <laughs> um, I'll keep it brief because I hate public speaking, um, but I'm super grateful to be here tonight, and thanks to the committee. This is super awesome. Um, just really appreciative of all my friends and family that are here as well. Thanks, you guys, for showing up, and uh, the real MVPs are really my parents. As my mom alluded to, they put a lot of miles on their car. Uh, they never missed a practice, never a game. Um, I really appreciate you guys, and thanks for being my number one fans. That's it. Thanks. Appreciate it. All right, we're going way back on this one. 1938, Class M State Runner of Boys Basketball Team. At the time, Windsor High School was called John Fitch High School, and under coach John Powers, and Captain John Kochka, they completed a 15-3 and three season, earning the team a qualifying berth in the Central Valley Class M High School Tournament. Team won two games, but lost the third one to Brantford in another era when the score was 37-18. to 18. That's usually the first quarter. Now, they were the first team from Windsor to finish as runner-up in the state tournament. That goes back to 1938, and they're going to be introduced tonight by John Falana. Thank you, Mike. And congratulations to all of the inductees uh, to the Windsor High School uh, Hall of Fame. Mike, you stole my thunder. Uh, I was chosen to speak for the 38 team only because I was born in 1937. <laughs> We're here to celebrate two distinct teams from Windsor, the 1938 uh, John Fitch uh, basketball team who, as Mike said, was the first team from Windsor to uh, go to the state championships and became and lost and became the runner-up. 
61 years later, the Windsor High School basketball team went to the state finals and took the championship and brought it back to Windsor. Thank you, Coach Smith. Just to digress uh, a little bit about the, uh, uh, about the 1938 team, it's true. They completed a successful season with 15 wins, three losses, earning them the right to go to the state championships. Uh, they won two games, lost to Brantford 37 to 18. A few tidbits. Today's basketball team scores 37 points in just one quarter. Uh, to show you the different times, today's players shoot 30-foot jump shots and dunk the ball uh, on fast breaks. In 1938, has anybody ever heard of a two-handed set shot? <laughs> or shooting a foul shot underhand? I don't think so. I, at this point, I would like to introduce to you the members of the 1938 John Fitch High basketball team. Their head coach was John Powers. John Kochka was their captain, their leader, their high scorer, and an outstanding athlete. Charlie Iggy Kosherik. He was their second leading scorer and another outstanding athlete. John Alexo became one of the mainstays of that team. Ray Donahue. Ray Donahue became chairman of the Democratic Committee and later on became the chairman of the Democratic Committee out of Papuanic. Bob Sullivan ran track, became the fire marshal in the town of Windsor. His brother, Warren Sullivan, became a doctor, had a family practice in Windsor for many years, and became the medical examiner for the town of Windsor. Doug Alton. Doug followed his father Fred and his brother Bob as a pharmacist for the Windsor Drug Store. Harrison Le Leedy. Harrison became a co-partner in Merwin Leak in Sheenan, which was a funeral home in downtown Windsor. The other members of that team were Whitey Zemensky and Robert Dawes. That was the end of an era. A tribute to the 1938 basketball team and its members who are no longer here. John Fitch closed its doors in June of 1952. In September of 1952, the doors for the first time were open at the new Windsor High School. Thank you. I think as John Zito said here a few moments ago, winning's not normal. Winning is not easy. It takes a lot of hard work and dedication. And sometimes it takes a lot of losing too. You gotta get knocked down. And to find out how good you can be, you gotta get up. Well, 
in Ken Smith's 11th season coaching Windsor, he was probably saying, when are we gonna win this thing? When can we get a title? He was 11 years in, but the team, Windsor High School's basketball club, rose to the occasion and continued the winning mantra in 99. It's not who we play, it's how we play. So this team ended the season with a 23 and two record. The wins didn't end there for the 98-99 season. They won the CCC West tournament. They went as far as defending their 98 state title. So I misspoke a little bit. 10 years in, he won his first title. And 11 years in, he won his second. They defeated Weaver High School, one of the great teams over the years, and became back-to-back -back champions. So into the Hall of Fame they go, as they should, the 99 Class Double L State Championship boys basketball team from Windsor High School. And appropriately to introduce them, their head coach, Ken Smith. Hi, right, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, congratulations to the inductees and the past inductees. Um, tonight, it was supposed to be a special guy, and I would like to mention his name um, to bring us in. Um, and I asked another guy to bring us in. I'll tell you about this guy. It was John Zito. You see how well he did for his son. So, but he said he didn't want to do two inductees because this other guy lost his life. He was my AD in both state championships, and his name was Dave Johnson. Dave was a very, very good friend of mine uh, and, and the families, and one of the best ADs I ever had, besides the guy who hired me also, and Judy Saxon was pretty good too. But, uh, <laughs> You know, besides the guy, uh, Bill. But Dave was a great, very supportive man who lost his life this year. And I was just hopefully, you know, that's just a few months ago, I was hoping that he would be here to induct us in. So please uh, keep Dave in your prayers, you know, when you think about this team, because he was really the orchestrator of both championships, because he really gave me the support that I needed as a coach to want to win, to want to get out there and get the kids working and everything else. He supported the program. He dressed us in nice uniforms and everything like that. But so Dave was supposed to bring us in. And uh, you know, I hope Dave is looking down on us right now and just smiling because I love him. And may God bless his soul. But back to this team, I want to talk to, uh, we have some of the guys that's here but I just want to read, you know, this is, I don't know if these guys have this shirt here that says back to back, you know, and these are all the guys who are on the team. I was going to wear it up here, but it's probably been a little too tight. <laughs> but, uh, I just want to read the guys' names off if you would bear with me here. Um, the team players. Um, I can't remember the uh, managers and stuff. I know one of them was uh, Mrs. Taylor, I guess. Um, she was one of our managers because she reminded me at a function that we had up here maybe a couple of weeks ago. But um, one of the kids' name was starting with Dominic Ricketts. Michael Dukes is here tonight. Derek Lickey, Charles Dougal, Andoni Alberti, John Zito, who's also here tonight, uh, Itor Alberti, Brian Dublinski, Rob Cawley, who's also here tonight, uh, James Taylor. If you guys would come up and join me, I'd appreciate it. Uh, James Taylor. Derek <laughs> uh, Walker. Francis Flores, Eric Raimondo, Gene Talbert, and Mr. Windsor, we used to call him, is a very, very nice guy. His name was Luke Reynolds. Um, 
the assistant coaches were who were not here, uh, Tylon Smith, my oldest child, uh, Gino Therese, and Sean Bell, who now coaches at that school called Weaver. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, we prided ourselves on, you know, defense and toughness. And honestly, these guys, they just really, we spend so much time together in the off season you know, doing a lot of great things, you know, as far as basketball goes and everything else. And um, I mean, I wish the majority of these guys could have made it, but I think due to the COVID, everybody had a big setback because obviously we were supposed to have this last year, but you know, um, and missing my guy Dave is, is just like, this is special. And uh, I don't know, do these guys get a chance to talk? Can they, good, okay. Uh -oh. Let me move. I got you. <laughs> good afternoon. Uh, I'm Michael Dukes. I was the captain of the state championship team in 99. I was a uh, part of the 1998 state champion, so I'm the only two time champion on the team. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Keon. Um, I was also the MVP of the state championship game. <laughs> So I, I, I would like to see myself more as individuals. <laughs> but um, um, this man right here, he makes everything happen. I know Keon talked about Mrs. Smith, but I got a great story. I remember playing against Connor, and uh, I was wide open for a three-pointer. And if you know Coach, I was the shooter. And if I didn't shoot the ball, he would take me out. But I think it was either John or Andoni was wide open, and I passed the ball to them, and he missed the layup. And I heard the buzzer go off, and I'm thinking, oh, okay, Donnie, you done here. He's coming out the game. And he was like, Michael, sit down. And I heard Mrs. Smith say, shoot the ball, Michael. <laughs> and if you know, we are, our, our games are packed. But you can hear the two people in the crowd. You can hear Mrs. Smith, and you can hear Coach Smith. But uh, that was just crazy because uh, he, he taught me something in that moment of confidence. You know, you're wide open. I want you to shoot the ball in those moments. And that carried with me all the way to college. I went to play for uh, Coach Howie Dickerman at Central Connecticut State University. And um, I had the pleasure of playing against Keon at you know, University of Hartford and John at UMBC and uh, Keith Price at uh, um, Saint, well, Mount St. Mary, excuse me. Um, those are three Windsor guys. And for all of us to play against each other in college, that's kudos to Coach Smith. So um, that just lets you know what kind of man he is um, and what he did for all of us on the stage. So um, thank you, Coach everything. You know what you mean to me. Um, I also like to thank my parents, uh, my mom, my dad, uh, my, my whole family is here. They came out to support my sister, uh, my nephews, my stepson, my son. So just to be honored with my family here is amazing and I want to thank everybody for that. So um, I appreciate you. Hey, don't forget the wife, man. And most importantly, most importantly, my wife, I just got married. Uh, <laughs> uh, that was a good recovery, Mike. <laughs> um, good evening, everyone. Um, just want to say it's, it's such an honor and, and a blessing to be a part of this class today. I'm Robert Cauley. I had the pleasure of playing uh, for Ken Smith. He is a tough, uh, hard-nosed coach. Um, you know, as a kid, when you're going through the program, you know, you, you think, oh, he's mean and he's, he's evil. But I, I'll be honest with you, you know, some of those, some of those practices were, were rough. But he was preparing boys and young men to grow up to be fabulous men um, that you have standing before you here today. So I want to thank you, Coach Smith, for that. Um, back then, Coach Smith ran a program where you were not allowed to have long hair. And he made it a point that you had to have a low cut haircut. And if I knew back then that I was going to lose all my hair, <laughs> I wouldn't have showed up to practice with braids and got kicked out all the time. Um, 
you know, his famous words were, you know what, just hit the stairs. And, uh, you know, he remembered those. I, I lived on the stairs because I was, you know, <laughs> I was hard headed. But um, just standing here with these guys, you know, um, Mike, me and Mike actually still play in leagues to this day, day together. Um, we won a championship Sunday, right? This past Sunday, uh, we won a championship. And, um, you know, it's just good to be a part of this class. Um, and then John right here. John was my man growing up um, and playing basketball. And just a little something real quick. I learned how to dunk because of John Zito. <laughs> and, and, and why it was, I always had hops. And John looked at me and said, why are you trying to jump from all the way back there? Just take a step in and dunk the ball. And uh, I did it. And ever since then, you know, I've been, been pretty much uh, dunking. And um, thank you, John. <laughs> um, and just to touch on a little bit that uh, Mr. Zito said, I have a daughter. Um, and I put her through the same treatment that I got courtesy of Coach Smith. And I mean that in a positive way. Um, because, and because of that, and because of my upbringing in the program, my daughter is currently on a full ride to Villanova University and playing basketball, actually, for the school. So thank you, Coach Smith, um, for that. Um, and then we had that same deal that Mr. Zito had with John. Um, I told her, listen, you get a full ride, and you know, I'll buy you a car. And um, she has a sight set on the Rubicon. And I said, that's not going to happen. We're going to get your used Honda Accord. So, <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. Um, and uh, I'd just like to thank my, my lovely wife for being here with me today, and uh, my son and my daughter, who can't be here, obviously, because she's in school. But um, you know, Coach Smith, every time I see him, he reminds me that I am with my wife because of the program. And uh, it's true, it's actually a true story. We were playing in, what, in Manchester, right? And she walked in the gym, and I was like, you know, we, we're in the game, and I was like, ooh, who that? You know? <laughs> Coach Smith used some explicit language, and he was like, get in the game, you know, focus, you know? And, um, you know, as a result uh, of the program, you know, um, you know, we're married for, 13, 13 years. <laughs> well, it'll be 13 years uh, in a few weeks. But um, I just thank you for everything that you've done uh, for me and for these young men that don't see it currently. But as they get older, they will grow and appreciate everything that you're doing uh, with these young men. And the parents for trusting that you have the kids' best interests. So thank you, Coach. I already said my piece, thank you. Mike, I didn't get the right one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, I got to get you there. I just want to say one more thing. Um, once again, thank you guys for coming out. It's been great. And I want to thank my lovely wife also before I get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, sweetie. Thank you all for coming out. Greatly appreciate it. And honestly, please come by and see some games. We need you to come back. You alumni, we need you to come to the school and watch us play. I would invite the 38 team back also, too, if I could. But I think that's a great feat. I would like to honor them at a game. I don't know who I have to talk to, but I really would like that to happen. Especially you Hall of Famers, if you come in, let them know that you're here and I'll, I'll stop the game and say, hey, we have so-and-so as a Hall of Famer. Please come back, all right? Thank you very much. That's for you, Coach. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. All right, congratulations to all our inductees. Great night. We appreciate you coming and, uh, and all your support for the Windsor High School Hall of Fame. And hopefully we're back doing it again next year. Congratulations again. Enjoy the night.
before we wrap everything up, if I could just ask for another round of applause for a great MC, Mike Crispino. We are so fortunate when we have somebody of, of Mike's caliber up here. It makes it a, a, just a, a, another notch above. Before we conclude everything, I would certainly like to thank everyone who took the time to come here tonight. Again, want to congratulate the, the new inductees into the class. Please make sure you wear your, wear your pin with pride. We want to keep this event going, so a little bit of a, a plea. If there's anybody who would like to join the committee, please talk to a committee member. Michael, get somebody to wherever you went to, get somebody to fill out a nomination form for you. All right, we need nominations on a regular basis. So with that being said, enjoy. We've got the room for a while. Stay, mingle, talk with each other. The posters are yours, the inductees. You can take those home with you. And again, congratulations, everyone. Thank you very much.